Hi, I'm Simon Shields, co-founder of Monash Investors. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Monash Investors Australian Small Companies Fund. Monash Investors was founded by myself and Shane Fitzgerald in 2012 and we have a long background as analysts and fund managers. Uh, I started on the buy side as they say with um, mostly Colonial First State and UBS where I was head of Australian equities at both those firms. Shane was mixed on the sell side as well as the buy side. Shane was a long-standing analyst at JP Morgan, top rated for a very long period of time before he came over to the buy side at UBS and together we went across to found Monash Investors. Monash is managing a Australian small companies fund which has a flexible mandate. Um, so that means it's not stuck just investing in what's in the index, it can go a little bit outside it and also do a little bit of shorting as well. And it's got a strong track record. Over the last 12 years, we've outperformed the small um, ORDS total return index by about 4% per annum. Our investment philosophy is built on the fact that we're not completely growth, we're not completely value. We want to have both in the portfolio. On the basis that most stocks are fairly priced most of the time, but significant mispricing does occur at times. We can look back and we can see each year that most stocks have performed within 10 or 15% of what the market's done, give or take, but there are always these large outliers, both positive and negative, at the end of each year. Our task as fund managers is to really see if we can focus on finding those stocks that are going to really outperform or underperform the market through that period. And to do that, we look for recurring business situations or recurring patterns of behaviour. We really focus on those because they allow us to identify changes in prospects for the firms and you know we need to understand what the market's misunderstanding about those businesses uh, so that we can identify whether or not there is a large amount of value being left on the table in advance. So what are some of these examples of recurring business situations? Well for the most part they're about um, underestimation by the market of significant change. Um, examples of that would be things like uh, store rollout, it could be a retail concept that's going through shopping centres across the country, or it could be a big box retailer that's being rolled out, um, a, new, a new concept. It could be a new product uh, or, or service that consumers or businesses are finding a much better way uh, than their existing products or services. Uh, or it could be a geographic expansion into new markets with a proven business that's done extremely well in one market and we can see that these other markets are right for that, for that business as well. That's not the only recurring situation, there are many. A another large category is really around the changing power of a company versus its consumers or versus its suppliers or versus its competitors. And it's this change in relative uh, positioning that can lead to changes in, in earnings that the market just hasn't really factored into, into current uh, prices. Another area are cues that we can be given from behavioural things, such as the way that a, a business deflects an answer to, to a question, or perhaps the way it changes the way it talks about uh, its business. So, so all these things can pique our interest, make us dig deeper, and of themselves these recurring situations um, allow us to, to find uh, opportunities in businesses that a less experienced analyst team uh, wouldn't be able to identify. Um, Shane and I are into our fourth decade each of being fund managers and analysts and, and Monash collectively um, has many, many decades of experience and it's this that we're relying on to be able to identify these uh, recurring situations. That's where we start, but what are we actually looking for in terms of the companies uh, themselves? Well, we have a mnemonic, we call it GIVE and, and the GIVE mnemonic helps us identify a compelling investment. We're dealing in uncertainty as investors and it's not like we can just say any particular investment we're, we're going to be investing is, is a sure thing. We don't know what the future is going to hold so um, we do our best to shift the odds in our favour and we do that with this give mnemonic. So the first part of it is G for growth. We're looking for these step changes uh, in a business. What's going to cause the business to, to have a step change and like I said it could be um, this recurring business situation and that's where the insight uh, comes in. We want to be able to actually understand why the business is mispriced and how that mispricing 
is going to uh, be resolved by the market. Then we're looking for the value. This is the payoff and this really is the guts of it because it's all very well to find a company that's got uh, these step changes up or down in earnings um, and we understand uh, you know, how the market's going to come across those. But really, is there a mispricing opportunity and how, how big it is? Um, we've got quite a high bar uh, in looking for mispricing, over 60% uh, upside when we're looking to invest uh, in a company. And then finally, uh, event. So this is something we look forward to in the future that um, shows us that we're on track. So we come up with these, what we call signposts, and we want to see the company hit these signposts along the way to know that we're on track. And if we don't hit those signposts, uh, we take action because perhaps things are going awry. And that really brings us into our selling discipline because that's another key aspect of, of what we do. So clearly we've, we've created this um, understanding of the company that allows us to assess its value and we have a price target and as we move towards that price target we sell the company down and eventually we, we sell out as we hit the price target. But beyond that we need some things that actually get us out of the company when things aren't going so well. If our if we've completely misunderstood a company and that becomes obvious, we call that an investment thesis violation and we sell out completely. But often that's a late realisation. And so we came up with what we call early warning triggers. And when one of these early warning triggers are hit, we sell down a third of our position. And if we have two early warning triggers hit in a row, we completely get out of the company. So the first trigger would be a spike in short interest. Obviously, it's not compelling to other people if they're going to be putting a, a short on. We see a spike in short interest. That's an early warning trigger. Likewise, an unexpected downward earnings revision. If that happens, uh, we're being surprised negatively. And again, early warning trigger. And finally, as I said, our signposts. We, we look for signposts in advance. And as we hit those signposts going forward, that's a tick. If we miss a signpost, that's a trigger. In this way, we're able to find compelling opportunities. We're able to price them and we're able to control for risk in the portfolio. Thanks a lot for listening. If you need any more information about us, just go to our website, monashinvestors.com.